So this is a lesson and play along video for one of the easy duets from my free beginner method book. There's a link for that free method book um, in the description of the video. Um, but what we're going to do in this video is first I'm going to play the duet with my friend Natasha. And then we're going to play the student part with counting out loud. And then I'm going to play the teacher's part with counting out loud so you can play along while I count. And then I'm going to play the teacher's part with a count in but not counting out loud while I play. Um, although this isn't a substitute for an actual um, playing a duet with your teacher or another student, um, I hope that it helps out some people studying um, the book at home. So let's take a look at that video of the duet. So one of the things about this particular duet is that the accompaniment part, the teacher part on the lower staff, um, includes the melody. And um, I do this every once in a while in the method book, just in order to have the student and the teacher um, phrase the melody together. And sometimes this is, um, this is helpful for encouraging the student to, to phrase um, well. And, and also it can just be helpful in general for the student if the, if the duet is a little bit longer or a little bit more complicated. So let's first just play the student part and I'll count out loud and then um, we'll play the, the teacher part and uh, so you can play along. So this starts on the third beat of a pickup bar, right? So I'm going to count one, two, three. So just remember that um, you always want to make sure you're feeling those first two beats. So I'll be counting just two for nothing. One, and we're playing this, the student part. <laughs> one, two, three, one. Um, and actually, at the end there, we should, technically, it's one, two, cut after two beats. When you have a pickup in the first bar, then you usually cut the last bar a little bit. But and nevertheless, you can sometimes let it ring a little bit longer at the end. Okay, there's that one oddity in here because, you know, in my method book, um, all the D's and the G's are fingered with the fourth finger to allow, later on, to allow the third finger to grab bass notes. Um, but in this particular case, because we have D, D, G, we're using three, three, and then four. Otherwise, you'd have to jump that finger over, which wouldn't be very legato. So be careful of that fingering there and make sure you're observing it. 
Okay, let's do the teacher part now. Or you're going to play the student part, I'm going to play the teacher part. Um, so you're going to play along with me, and I'm going to count out loud the first time so that it makes it just a little bit easier for you to follow the score. So I'll count two beats in, and remember, I'm playing the melody with you in this one. One, two, three. Okay, now I'm going to play the teacher part without counting, but um, I will count you in. Usually in a, in a duet, um, I would just indicate the pulse to you. And then we would just do it through visual cues. But because this is a beginner method book, I will count you in to make sure that we're following the same tempo. This is a little bit longer of a duet. Um, it's very helpful in this particular case since I'm playing the melody with you. But um, one thing I'll say is that I will be cueing the beginnings of phrases and things like that in the beginning of bars. So if you have the screen positioned um, in the line of your left hand, you'll, out of the corner of your eye, you'll see me indicate when to start sometimes, even though I'll be trying to keep pretty metronomic time in order to make this possible. So I'll be counting two bars for nothing, and then we'll start on the third beat, and you're playing the student part, I'm playing the teacher part. One, two, So especially at the beginning and at the very end, you want to make sure that you visually cut or start uh, along with me. <laughs> 